Welcome to the start of a new section and to the start of a new project, the Task Manager project. Now, in this video in particular, we're going to talk about the database we'll be using to store our user data. That is MongoDB. So for this new project, we're going to have an authentication system and we're going to need a more robust solution than just storing all of our data in a JSON file like we had done for the notes application. Now, before we dive in and actually explore this database, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. I'm going to close all open editors in Visual Studio Code, and I'm also going to collapse that web server directory since we're done with that, and we're going to move on to a new project. From the terminal, we can use Control C to shut down NodeMon, and I'll use CD dot dot to navigate out of the web server folder back to the node course directory. From here, we can use clear to clear the terminal output, and now we have a nice clean space for starting our new project. From here, we're going to move into the browser and do something similar. I'm going to close all four tabs related to the weather application that was the GitHub tab, the Heroku tab, then our local and production version of the application. I can leave open the Chrome inspect tab though, in case we need to use that. And from here, we're going to crack open a new tab and to start, we're going to explore the database we'll be using to store all of our user data, that is MongoDB. We can find MongoDB on the web over at mongodb.com. Now, MongoDB is an open source database and it's also available for all operating systems. So whether you're running on Windows, Mac, or Linux, you're gonna be able to install the database and get it running on your machine. And that's exactly what we'll end up doing in the next couple of videos. From there, we'll be able to use the MongoDB native driver to connect to our database from Node.js, and we'll be able to start the process of writing and reading data. Now, MongoDB was originally launched in 2009, which as you'll remember is the same year when Node.js was first launched. Now, the timing here is merely coincidental, but the Node.js community definitely fell in love with MongoDB and it became the database of choice for many Node.js developers. Now, it's important to note that Node.js isn't exclusive to MongoDB in any way whatsoever. You can use MongoDB in other programming languages, and you can use other databases with Node.js. You could use, as an example, MySQL or Postgres with Node.js as well. But we have to pick something, and MongoDB is a great choice for Node.js developers. We'll learn more about why it's a great choice as we actually start to use it in this section. If you've worked with a database before, it's possible you worked with an SQL database. This would include very popular database solutions like MySQL and Postgres. Now, MongoDB falls under a different category of database called a NoSQL database. SQL stands for the Structured Query Language, and NoSQL stands for Not Only Structured Query Language. Now, the actual usage of MongoDB is going to look a bit different than what you'd see if you were using an SQL database, but it's going to provide us with a structured way to store and interact with our data. MongoDB also provides Node.js developers with an NPM module that can easily be used to read and write from the database. Now, to wrap up this video, what I want to do is move into a quick visualization that's going to compare and contrast both SQL and NoSQL databases at a high level. And in the next couple of videos, we'll actually start the process of installing this on our machine and connecting to it from Node.js. For this comparison, we'll put our SQL database on the left-hand side and we'll put our NoSQL database, in this case, MongoDB, over here on the right. Now, many of the concepts are identical in both but some are slightly different or at least have different names. And the goal here is for us to build up a vocabulary for NoSQL that we can use as we're integrating MongoDB into our Node.js applications. Let's start with an easy comparison, the concept of a database. Both have them and with MongoDB, we can create as many databases as our application needs. And we'll learn how to do that in just a few videos. So we could easily create one database for one application, and then we could create other databases for our other apps. Now from here, we start to talk about exactly how the data is stored, and that's where we start to see some differences between the SQL database on the left 
and the NoSQL database on the right. For the SQL database, your data is stored in this, which is known as a table. Your database could have as many tables as you need for your application. So you might have one table to store your user data and another to store the various tasks that your users need to complete. Right here, each user has an ID, a name, an email, and a password, and I have an example user down below. Now we're also storing data in our NoSQL databases, but it looks a bit more like this, and in NoSQL vocabulary, it's referred to as a collection. Your NoSQL database can have as many collections as it needs. So as with the example from our SQL database, you might have one collection which stores a list of users in your application, and you might have a second collection which stores a list of tasks that your users need to complete. Now when it comes to describing the actual data, what we're seeing here, we have a different set of terms between the two. How do we describe the individual items being stored in either the table or the collection? In SQL, this is known as a row or a record. So here I could say I have a user's table with a single record, meaning that there is one entry inside of there. Inside of a NoSQL database, we have what are known as documents, and you can see a document right here highlighted in blue. Documents look a whole lot like JSON. So we have rows and records, and we have documents. What about the individual things stored inside of there? For an SQL database, this is known as a column. So here I could say I have a user table with four columns, ID, name, email, and password. In a NoSQL database like MongoDB, these are just known as fields. So here I could say this document has four fields, ID, name, email, and password. So it's really important to understand the basic vocabulary for a NoSQL database so we can actually start to use it and have conversations about MongoDB with all of us being on the same page as to what a collection is, what a document is, and what a field is. A collection is a list of entries. Those individual entries are referred to as documents, and a document can have as many fields as you need. Your user's collection might have four fields for each user, while a different collection for something like tasks would have a completely different set of fields for each document, and we'll learn how to set all of that up as we progress through the class. That's where we're gonna stop for this video. Now that we have some basic vocab locked down, it's time to move on to the next two videos, which are gonna be installation videos, where we're gonna get MongoDB set up. There is one installation video for Mac and Linux, and there's a separate one for Windows users. Let's go ahead and jump right in.